So how do we do it? This is the Bitcoin block um, format. We modify it by increasing several fields. First, we have a transaction proposal zone. This transaction proposal zone contain, may contain some fresh transactions. And the traditional transaction confirmation zone must, can only contain transactions that was proposed several blocks before. For example, between two blocks before and five blocks before. Only these transactions can be confirmed. New transactions cannot be confirmed in the transaction confirmation zone. And the transaction proposal zone only contains truncated transaction IDs, namely the shorter version of the transaction ID. So the, so the transaction proposal zone can be really small. And also, a block can include as many uncle blocks as you want. Uncle blocks should uh, propagate their headers and their transaction proposal zone in the block. And uncle blocks don't count in block size limit so that miners are not discouraged to um, include uncle blocks in their block. So let me give more detail about the transaction proposal zone. It is small because it only contains truncated transaction ID. And the complete transactions are synchronized after propagating the block. So they are synchronized in parallel. They will not affect the block propagation uh, procedure. And it does not affect block validity as long as the hash checks. So which means it, in the transaction proposal zone, there may be invalid transactions, double spending transactions. And miners may refuse to provide some transactions in this zone. We, these are also fine. So recall that this is Bitcoin's block propagation. In our protocol, this is our compact block, which is slightly larger than Bitcoin's compact block. And a uh, compact block is always propagated immediately to your neighbors. And the newly proposed transactions, if some of them are missing in your transaction pool, they can be propagated after you send out the compact block. These two are parallel processes. They don't affect each other. And then these transactions are verified and propagated and to the next neighbor and etc. Several natural questions. What if miners refuse to provide the complete version of proposed transactions? I put this transaction ID in my transaction proposal zone, but when you ask me, I don't know about it. It has no effect in block propagation because blocks are propagated regardless of whether there are fresh transactions in the transaction proposal zone. And other miners can still proceed with mining because there are enough proposed transactions to confirm. There's no need for miners to mine empty blocks because I know that there's a range of blocks that in this transaction proposal zones, the last block cannot include these transactions, which is only available for me. So I can mine these transactions contribute to transaction confirmation. And what if miners incorporate this proposed without broadcast transaction in their later blocks to gain a de facto selfish mining advantage? In Nakamoto consensus, the advantage of slot propagation is always useful in finding the next block. For a miner, I can always, after I find a block, I only tell the block hider and transfer the block really slowly. During this process, I'm the only one who can mine after this block. But in our protocol, it can only be used to slow down propagation and block afterwards because this propagated without broadcast transactions, um, only, the, only the selfish miner knows these transactions and only the selfish miner can use it as an advantage. However, it cannot be used in the next block because there need to, uh, there need to be a gap. The, it can, a miner can only mine transactions that are proposed between two and five blocks. Before that, you cannot mine a transaction in the pre, proposed in the previous block, as I said, but only if that block is found by the attacker. Here's an illustration. In Nakamoto consensus, when the selfish miner finds block H, it can immediately start mining the, the H plus one block. However, honest miner can on, only start mining after re, they receive the full block. And during the block propagation period, that's the selfish miner's advantage. However, in our protocol, when the selfish miner finds block H, honest miner can immediately start mining H plus one. 
And if the selfish miner wants to utilize this broadcast, uh, this proposed without broadcast transactions, it has to find the block, unblock afterwards. Only then can the selfish miner utilize this advantage. However, this happens less often. You cannot be sure that after seven blocks, there will be a block mined by me. It's very hard to, to predict that. So to best utilize bandwidth, our protocol uh, uses a different difficulty adjustment uh, mechanism, which targets a fixed orphan rate, counted as uncles in the last difficulty adjustment period. If the orphan rate if the orphan rate in the last uh, difficulty adjustment period is below the target orphan rate, the difficulty will lower, and the block interval will lower, and the throughput would increase. In other words, that um, very few orphans means the network can synchronize transactions faster, which means we can increase the throughput without harming the uh, without uh, increasing the uh, without harming the decentralization, whatever. Otherwise, the difficulty increase and the block interval would also increase and the throughput will decrease. A higher orphan rate means the network cannot process this much transactions in a difficulty adjustment period. Then we can lower the throughput. And the block reward is proportional to the inverse of the expected block interval so that the expect, expected total reward per difficulty adjustment period is fixed, which means if you have 10 minutes per block, and each block has 12.5 Bitcoin. When you have five minutes per block, each block can have 6.125 Bitcoin. So the issue rate of uh, the currency is always fixed. Last, to defend against selfish mining. So recall that, um, so sorry, the difference between our protocol and Nakamoto consensus is that difficulty adjustment mechanism counts all blocks, including uncles, when estimating the total mining power. Same as Nakamoto consensus, without the attack, the attacker finds three blocks in 10, the honest miner finds seven. With the attack, the attacker finds three blocks in seven, and the honest miner finds four. Three of the honest blocks are orphaned, and the main chain grows slower. But recall that selfish mining is not profitable in the first difficulty adjustment period. What happens in the second difficulty adjustment period? In the next epoch, the difficulty will stay the same, and the attacker cannot find more blocks with the same mining power. Therefore, selfish mining is no longer profitable. Is that clear? Mm -hmm. So in sum, our protocol makes use of orphaned blocks. These are a symbol of orphaned blocks. We want, to <laughs> we want to reduce the number of orphans by two-step transaction confirmation. And after the orphan is reduced, we use the remaining ones as an indicator of bandwidth utilization to adjust the throughput. And given that uncle information is embedded in the blockchain already, we can use them to make selfish mining unprofitable. <laughs>